How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you how I use frequency separation in Photoshop to edit my headshots. Let's go. So first of all, just a really, really quick summary of what is frequency separation in case you don't know what it is. Uh, frequency separation is basically a separation of detail from color in a photo. So what you can do is blend the colors so you get rid of any tiny little blemishes, any little tiny red spots, that kind of thing in someone's skin, or just a general unevenness in the color of the skin, in the tones of the skin, whilst preserving all of the details. So like little stubble hairs, pores, wrinkles, all of that stuff. You can kind of think of it as applying foundation makeup to someone's face, but in Photoshop. Now there are many, many ways that you can do frequency separation and everyone has their own preference. I've tried a few different versions and I think the version that I've stuck with the most is actually a slightly modified version of something I learned from Aaron Nace over at Flurn years ago, absolutely years ago. Uh, and I've modified it a little bit to fit my own workflow so that it just, it feels a bit more natural to me. But as I say, there are so many different ways that you can do this. So if you find that something I'm doing doesn't quite feel right to you, think about how you can apply that to your own workflow and modify it slightly so that it fits your preferences. Basically take what you want, leave what you don't want. Okay, let's jump into Photoshop. So I've got this portrait here, which is a very nice portrait, very well lit, if I say so myself in that it's, it's giving a very nice even light over the model's face and the model happened to have quite good skin so it wasn't a problem of you know having to combat red blotches and all of that kind of stuff. But if we wanted to smooth it out just a little bit by applying some frequency separation so that the skin looks completely sorry about that I just spat on you so that the skin looks completely even but all of the details are preserved. Well here's what we do. First of all create two copies of this background layer using Command or Control J. The bottom layer, we're gonna call it uh, Blur. The top layer, we're gonna call it Texture. Okay, now just remove the visibility of the top layer because we wanna see the bottom layer. We're gonna go straight up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And here we're gonna apply a blur that essentially melds all of the colors in her cheeks, in your subject's cheeks, so that it looks like one uniform color. So depending on the resolution of your photo, this is gonna require more or fewer pixels in Gaussian Blur. Okay, I think that's, yeah, that's probably good. About 11 pixels. Lovely. Right, now we bring back the visibility on texture, we come up to image, and we come down to apply image. Now in apply image, you want the layer to be blur so that it's applying the image to the blur layer, not to everything. In the blending mode, we wanna to set to subtract. The scale, we wanna to set to two. And the offset, we wanna put at one, two, eight. Now your image should look somewhat like this with a sort of gray, with a sort of gray overlay and you can see a little bit of color leaking through in the very saturated parts like her eyes and lips. And then you can just see this sort of really weird over sharpened kind of uh, texture, which is our texture layer. Okay, hit okay on that. And now the blending mode here for that layer, you're gonna come down and change it to linear light. Your image now should look identical to when you first opened it. If it doesn't, you've gone wrong somewhere, repeat those steps, rewind and just try it again because by doing that process, it should look identical to when you first opened your image. And this is basically your frequency separation ready to go. You've separated your frequencies. You've separated your tones in your blur layer from your texture in your texture layer. So now is where there are 10 million ways that you can do this. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. First of all, I go back to the blur layer. I go back up to filters and I go back in to Gaussian blur and I apply more blur. Now don't be afraid of applying enough blur here. This looks terrible because it's applying it to the whole image, but we're not gonna be applying it to the whole image. We're gonna be selecting the areas with a brush that we want to apply it to. So don't be too worried about how it looks here. Let's maybe bring that down to, yeah, 26. That looks fine. Okay, then we're gonna select texture and blur. We're gonna hit Command or Control G to create a group. And then we're gonna come down here and create a mask on that group and invert it using Control or Command I. 
Whew. Okay, that was a lot of steps, I know, but essentially what we've done is we've created that entire frequency separation into a group which has a mask on it, and currently the mask is set to black, so it means that it's completely transparent, we can't see any of that frequency separation applied. So the next step is to go to your brush tool with B on the keyboard or just up there in the toolbar. And with a white brush applied, and now you just start drawing on the areas that you think could do with a little bit of evening out in terms of tones. And we're gonna start with the tones first, with the colors first. Okay, that's looking a little bit better mixed in terms of the tones. It's looking a little bit more uniform in terms of skin tones. And we can see if we remove the visibility on that before and after, it's really evening out a lot of the, uh, the contrast and a lot of the differences in tones. So now what we're gonna do is go in and clean up the texture layer a little bit. So we're gonna zoom in, we're gonna select our texture layer, and we're gonna come up and select the patch tool on the keyboard, or J. And with the patch tool, what we're gonna do is just remove some of the, the harsher details that are in the face. Now this is gonna vary depending on you know, who you're Photoshopping. But essentially what I like to do is highlight the entire eye bag area and then drag it down to the cheek because the cheek is usually even. If it's not even, you could try the forehead or the chin. But by dragging it down to somewhere else that's on her skin or his skin if you're, if you're editing a guy, you still maintain some of that porous texture that you have from skin. You don't want it to be a completely blank texture. So we'll click and drag that. Ooh, just make sure that that group is on, otherwise we won't see what we're doing. Okay, so we'll click and drag that down onto her cheek. Now, I could just leave that like that. I see a lot of people who Photoshop eye bags out entirely to the point where the person no longer looks like a real person. They look more like a mannequin. Personally, I don't like that. So before I deselect this selection of the patch tool, what I like to do is come up to edit. And in edit, you go fatch, fatch paid, patch fade, fade, oh, Jesus, fade patch selection. And set your opacity somewhere between 40 and 60%. That way what it's gonna do is fade that patch tool edit by 50%. And that looks a lot more natural. You can still see that you know there's actually an eye bag there. Uh, this person is still human, but it's just gotten rid of some of the harshness of the under eye bag because we're using studio lights, which can tend to accentuate harsh uh, features on the face. And so again, do the other side. Set it to 50. Lovely. Then it's really more of a, a preference thing, but I, I feel like these pores here are maybe a little bit too visible with the studio lights. So I'm just gonna select this patch tool and drag them up to there and then do the same thing again, fade that. And you can see that that just looks, it looks a lot more subtle, it looks a lot more even. Now, instead of going up to edit fade patch tool all the time, what I've actually done is created an action in here which does that process for me at the click of a button. So I'm just gonna be using that from now on, but you've seen how I did that fading. Okay, and then this skin area here, we're gonna do the same thing. Let's bring it up to there perhaps. Okay, lovely. Okay, and once you're done, you should have something that looks a lot more plain, a lot more um, just even, right? You compare that to that. And once you're finished working your way through your texture layer, you should find that your, your subject's face just looks a lot more evenly lit and the colors are a lot more even. And that is your frequency separation process. Now that's not everything that you would do. See, that's just the frequency separation. Following this, you would probably wanna do a little bit of dodging and burning to bring back in the contrast in cheekbones, under eyes, under chin, under nose, because the frequency separation, the way that I do it, tends to flatten out the picture a little bit so that you have that sort of even canvas to work on. So now you could merge everything down, come up to filter, go to camera roll filter. This is, to be honest, the fastest way of doing dodging and burning in Photoshop. Hit K on your keyboard to bring up your brush. Bring down the size of your brush. Make sure that your brush isn't doing anything weird, like adding a load of color temperature. Okay, and then your exposure will make that 0.30 and your highlights will make that 20. 
And we're just gonna add that on to her cheekbones there. Gonna make the brush even smaller. Add a line down the nose. A little bit under the nose there. Bit on the chin. And bit on the forehead there. And then maybe touch on the eyes there, like that. And then just maybe reduce it until you think it looks a little bit more normal. Then go for the opposite. So we're gonna do a little bit of burning just to accentuate those cheekbones, accentuate the eye arches, accentuate the lips, and sharpen that jawline. There we go. And now if I compare between before and after, I think that's looking really good. To be honest, I think it's maybe a little bit too much. I would probably reduce the opacity of that frequency separation group just so that you get a little bit of the original texture and colors coming in because this almost looks a little fake, which is what I was telling you to avoid in the beginning. But there you go, that is how I do frequency separation. And if you have watched all the way through this, well, you can get yourself this action pack that I created for frequency separation, which has the whole frequency separation process at the click of a button, beautiful, ready to go, and the 50% fade blend uh, action as well. All of that in there, just head over to my store using the coupon code that's in the description, and you'll be able to get that for free. All right. Thank you for watching. Give this a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and make sure to leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions at all. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Cheers.